I'm on. Am I on now? I thought it's when the green light's on, it's when it's on. Yeah, but it's not on. Might be the batteries are gone. There we go. You think maybe I'm on now? Yeah. You're on. There it is. Thank you. think there's a reverse osmosis uh, uh, spigot that you can get clear refreshing water it's not as good a water as this but it uh, it's still good thank you Nehemiah I guess he's out already but, uh, somebody would have told me I'll have a wrapper at the church if I would have said yeah okay that was very good. You rap for Jesus, you can rap any time here. I'm going to go to Second Chronicles 14. Wait, hold up. You gave me a thing, but now it's all starting to get kind of This morning I want you to know that God is on your side. There's some people, I believe, that live and walk their life and they think that that God is up there looking to pounce you over the head if you do something a little bit wrong. Right. In, it, yeah, in, <laughs> instead of uh, being <laughs> pulling for you, you mean that beat you over the head? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I used to. When, before I was saved, I always thought God was up there with a big ball bat, and anybody that had, was having any fun, you just pop them over the head because he didn't want that. But it's amazing what the enemy will tell you when you're on his side to keep you on his side. But when God takes the blinders off your eyes and where you can see him, it's like you step across into the other kingdom and it's like, oh, praise God, he's on my side. And he called me into his kingdom. Did you know that he called you? You think you found him. <laughs> Not that you were lost from him, but you, he said, you, you don't come to the Father unless he called you. So he called you, Amen. drew you by his spirit. Right. And you just were smart enough to say, yes, Lord, right. come on in. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Right. Somebody asked me about Revive. I never did get back to them. I don't know if they're out there in dreamland or not. But if you go to the internet, I believe it's revive.com. Yep. Revive. Is that what it is? Revive 2020.com. Yeah. So if you if you want to check it out, it's Revive 2020.com, and it's uh, the weekend of July 4th in Nashville, Tennessee. And we're going to be there, and again, we will not be having church that weekend. Uh, I'm going to have the the Carmelite singers down in Nashville, and uh, I'm just hoping they don't hear them, so they don't sign them up down there and I lose my whole family down there. <laughs> so, but, what is it? Hebraicroots.com Hebraicroots Network.com Network But That's, if you go and put Revive 2020, yeah, it will yeah. come up. Yeah, because I, I've i got a I did both. I did that. Yeah. I've got a brochure in my office and I thought it said Revive 2020. We're going. But good. We just need one more baby. Need what? One more baby. Is, is, is she, you still call her your baby? No, we just need one more baby born. Oh, okay. Okay. I got it. Praise the Lord. So, this Monday will be four weeks from the time that I've had quadruple bypass. And, uh, it seems like it seems like a long time 
and yet it seems like a short time. And uh, this almost feels like my first message because I think for about a month and a half before I had it, uh, I didn't teach either because I've got young bucks in the congregation that like to teach and I like to listen to them. So, uh, praise the Lord, I think Eric had taught a couple times and Tom a couple times and whatever, and then I wound up in the hospital, so it's been probably two months, two and a half months. And so yesterday I got a little static about it, or uh, last Saturday, so I thought I'd better get up here and uh, see if I can say a few things. Praise God. I love you guys, and I tell you the prayers of the saints makes a difference. When I was in the hospital Friday, they fa I found out I had to have surgery, and they kept me Saturday and Sunday. And uh, laying there in bed, knowing what's going to come, or that it's going to take a jigsaw and open up my sternum, uh, it was not just the most pleasant thing to talk about or think about. Uh, but I had a peace, and I knew it came because I knew people were praying for me. And uh, I know I always said I'd never let people cut me up. But when it comes to, uh, comes right down to it, when you have peace and everything, I knew that, you know, it's like when we sang the song, I could only imagine, I told Tom, I said, I almost was at the place where I didn't just have to imagine anymore. <laughs> because uh, you never know when you're going under that, you know, whether you're going to come out. I mean, most generally you do and, and all that. And he, the doctor told me I was a piece of cake because I had good liver and good everything else and was strong, and he said, this is just this is an easy one. And it's like, yeah, maybe it's easy for you, but not for me. But anyway, I hope I can get through this. I'm, it's the first time I've tried to stand up here and, and minister, but I read something in my devotion that I really liked, and uh, I was going to just mention it a little bit and then go on to what I had really wanted to teach on. But I don't think I'm going to get to that. That'll be for next week. Uh, but first I want to read Ezekiel 22, 30. The Bible says, And I sought for a man among them. Come on. This is God. Come on. Why does he need to seek anybody? He's God, right? And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. And at, at this day and age, in what we're going through, I'm, it's amazing about all the, the prayer calls that are out there that you can join uh, in the people are praying for this land. This land is, right now, it's, it's not against Republican and Democrat. What it is, is it's between good and evil. Uh, evil wants to take over, and if the good don't pray and stand up, evil will take over. The best way for evil to take over is for good men to do nothing. And the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We can go into our closet and we can pray and we think nothing happens because I'm somebody that when I do something I like to see results. And so when you pray it's like you can't just see results immediately. Sometimes you do. But you can't always see results immediately so it takes discipline to be able to go in there and pray for our nation, pray for our country, and pray for for the peace of, of uh, here in the U.S. But in Second Chronicles 14, I was reading through here, and I ran across something that really got my attention. Uh, it says, so Abijah slept with his fathers, which he was the king before Asa. They were they buried him in the city of David. Now Abijah was a good king. He was one that, that followed after God. Uh, he tore down a lot of the idols and all that stuff, and, and he followed after God. And actually, some of the same things happened to him that what happened to Asa, where he uh, where the armies came against him, and he was way outnumbered, and and uh, God showed up and, and delivered him from that. So Asa had a good father, and he followed in his father's footsteps in following after God. So then Asa his son reigned in his stead. In his day, the land was quiet. 10 years. So because of Abijah serving God, God kept them at peace for 10 years after Asa came in into, to be the king there. Asa did that which was good and right in the eyes of the Lord, his God. For he took away the altars of the strange gods and the high places and break down the images 
and cut down the groves and commanded Judah to seek the Lord God of their fathers and to do the law and the commandments. So it was interesting, even Asa took his mom. Did I just go off? Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear you. I think we need the batteries. Ah. We I think we do. We don't. We have them over at the house. I think they're trip away. Ah. So while Asa was, was uh, king, this army came up against them. And uh, let's see, I think I have it. And yeah, 2 Chronicles 14.9 says, and there came out against them Zerah the Ethiopian with an host of a thousand, thousand, and three hundred chariots and came unto Mershah. Now it says earlier that, that Asa had basically 500,000 soldiers warriors and so what came against him was twice as much as what he had so how would you like to go out and fight and realize that you were outnumbered two to one and uh so they the the people came and they set their their soldiers in array asa brought his out and he set his soldiers up and then after they turn around and look around and all of a sudden they realize that the other the, the other army has a has a uh, big group of on this side and on this side. So it's like they're basically in between 500,000 over here, 500,000 over here, and all they have is 500,000. And they're in the middle. So this is what Asa did. It said, And Asa cried unto the Lord his God and said, Jehovah, it is nothing with thee to help, whether with many or with them that have no power. Help us, O Jehovah our Elohim, for we rest on thee, and in thy name we go against this multitude. O Lord, thou art our God, let not man prevail against thee. Notice how he turned that around, yeah. where it's like he's not looking at it as the army coming after me, he's looking at it, turning around, and it's like, but they're coming after you. Yeah. And he's also saying that it doesn't matter how many are out there, whether there's a lot of them out there, there could be 20 million out there, but if God is on our side, we will prevail. Because it's God who does it and not him. And wouldn't it be neat if we could get a, a hold of that? Sometimes we have things come against us and we think are so huge, you know, they're so big. And it's, and it's like, uh, you know, so we just kind of crumble with the thing, this, this mountain's just too big. And Does it hurt to talk while somebody's messing around? It gets a little, it's a little especially since I'm a little, a little uncomfortable. Especially since I'm <coughs> working out of here. Yeah. Just stay up here. You want a chair? He's no, too proud for a chair. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> You're welcome. You that do anything? Pride goes before it falls, so does that mean I'm going to fall down? Uh, yeah. No, I've been doing this over 20 years. If I need to sit, I'll sit. I'm not too proud to sit. But I want to see if I can. Usually, I like to move around, but I'm not moving around too much either. So, O Lord, thou art our God. Let not man prevail against thee. So God is on your side. God lives inside of you. So when man comes against you and you have problems, they're coming against God. I mean, not, you know, not in the way we think they're coming against, but it's still, he's inside of you, he's your king, so they're actually coming against him also. So, we, so what Asa did was just turn this thing around. It's like they're not coming after me, they're coming after God. Because, because this army, this 500,000, serves the Lord God, and they follow after his commandments and do what he tells them to do. That's the key. Yeah. yeah. And God delivered them into their hands and killed many and took a great spoil. And again, they had many years of peace. But when they, but when they came home from the war, from the army, a seer came to see them, which we call them prophets now. So he went out to meet Asa, and he said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. 
The Lord is with you while you be with him. He will be found of you, but if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. So if you turn around and walk away from God and, and quit doing his commandments, keep doing the, quit doing the things that he said, then God will walk, will walk away. Right? So years later, the king of Israel rose up against him. And do you think Asa learned by what he did before? How God delivered him? So what he did was he sent silver and gold to the king of Syria to go fight his battle for him. He just put money in the offering and, did, and thought he did his job. Whoops, where did that come from? I don't even see that in my notes. But sometimes we get so comfortable. This king destroyed this big, huge army. Now another army comes up, and instead of getting his people together and going out knowing that God is with me and we can destroy them because God is on our side, he goes and asks the king of Assyria to come and fight his battle for him. So he's calling on a heathen king to come and deliver them from something else, from this so that he doesn't have to get his men out and so he doesn't have to stretch his faith out and he doesn't have to believe in God. He's now believing in Syria, king. Do we ever try to do that? So after all that happened, and it worked, Syria came in, defeated Israel, carried away a bunch of the people of Israel. And uh, I also find it interesting that at the time that Asa is the king, uh, there that a bunch of people, uh, a bunch of the Israelis from other tribes, I think it was, uh, it mentions, I mean, here's three different tribes that actually moved down to Judah yeah. because he was following after God and they wanted to follow after God, so they came and, and join with them. So when we say the Jews that are there now, there actually can be any tribes, different tribes that are there, uh, whatever. But so after this all happened, and I'm sure Ace is thinking, wow, I didn't even have to do much of anything, gave him a little silver and a little gold, and, and I didn't lose anybody, and I didn't have to put my faith out there for anything. And so he's feeling pretty good about himself. Well, for some reason, God sent the seer back to him. And he said, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore from henceforth thou shalt have rewards. Now think, this is a verse that, that really got a hold of me and I've been thinking about it ever since. The eyes of the Lord, Jehovah, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Do you think that was just an Old Testament thing? No. no. Do you ever think of God being out there looking for somebody that he can come and show himself strong through you? If we could get a hold of that concept, it's like we think we have to, and we should, get on our face, seek God, seek him, to, you know, we got to do this and, oh, just press in and this and that, and that's not wrong, we need to do that sometimes. But you ever thought about that God is pressing in, trying to find you, yes. that will walk in his covenant, walk in his commandments, and do the things that he tells you to do? That should change our lives right there. We think we have to try to manipulate God. We have to try to get him to do this and all this stuff. And all he's trying to do is trying to find somebody with a good heart, with a perfect heart, so that he can show off through you. That's right. That's right. I mean, show off might not be a very good word because it's we kind of look at it as a show off is not whatever. But it's like, that's what it sounds like he's trying to do. He wants to, he wants to make himself look good through you. And all you got to do is let him. But I like to run out there and 
see if I can do it myself. And that's probably an understatement. I'd have probably done the surgery on myself if, I, if I'd have figured I could get away with it. But think about it. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro over the earth. He's looking. Do you think he sees you every once in a while? I'd like to show off through Tom. Maybe through the gifts. Means he's our prophet in the house. So when Tom is is ministering or is, is prophesying, things like that, it's God showing off through Tom. And you might not like the idea of showing off, but I'm, the showing off is showing himself strong through him. I don't want to put it in a bad light. And you out there, he's looking for you too. He's looking for you to, so that you can walk in his ways and then he can show himself strong through you. He's actually looking for people like that, that he can do that. I got excited. It's like, so basically it's back to the old thing of I just have to make myself available yeah. and have a pure heart before him. That's right. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. And then he's looking for that person. That's right. Yeah. He's looking for somebody he can send roses to. Nobody ever found out he's sent them. It should change our life. Yeah, I still sometimes am thinking that God's trying to catch me in something. It's hard to change when you've been programmed for a certain and think a certain way. I know that when I became a Christian in 80, my whole thinking changed, even to where an old pear tree I thought was just beautiful because my God made it. And so King Asa suffered the consequences of instead of allowing God to show himself strong, called on somebody else instead of God. And he wound up dying later and having a lot of wars and a lot of problems yeah. and it's like it's interesting I find it interesting that these three tribe people from different tribes moved there just because they wanted to be in the blessing of God because they see that when Asa is following after God's commandments he's doing the feast he's doing all the things that God's told him to do and then they uh, move down there because they want to be where God is that's why a lot of people move to America I think there's freedom of, of religion Problem is, it's kind of turned into religion instead of freedom uh, to serve God, follow His commandments. Anyway, so when the seer heard this, or uh, he said, "Therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars," Asa got very angry, and he put the seer, the prophet, in prison, and he started treating his people badly. The other thing is we we don't like correction, do we? I mean, he's following after God. He takes down the idols and all this stuff, doing these things, and somebody stands up and says, you did foolishly, you didn't follow God. And he gets angry. He say, how can he have a perfect heart before him now? He gets angry with that. How can you go from that to the other? And he said, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceeding great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. So he continued that pattern, even though he started out well. Remember, I keep saying, let's end well. You know, a lot of people seem like they get in the race, they get saved, and they they could go big, you know, big guns, and 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 then at the end. They kind of get bitter. They kind of 
They don't end well. Asa, when you start reading about his life and you think this is a good king, this is wonderful, this is whatever, as long as he kept his eyes on God, he prospered. And you see over and over, when the kings fought, got rid of the idols, they prospered. They took land, they, or whatever. And one thing about, I just want to throw this in here. I usually talk a little bit about Israel. Uh, it looks like the July 1 time frame that they're going to annex the Jordan Valley. Uh, B. Netanyahu really wants to. Benny Gantz, he said he'd go along with it. And our person said that it's, if Billy Benny Gantz will go along with it, that's fine. Uh, and B Benny Gantz says that if our guy says yes, then he will say yes. So they're kind of like at a stand, you know. And I think it's going to happen. I, I think one of them or the other will. I think our guy should say yes to them, whatever. So but do you but do you know what normally happens when Israel takes land? Yeah, church, church, church. What normally happens? Spiritual. Spiritual. Re revival. The church gains land when when uh, Israel takes land. When I think in the Six Day War we had the Jesus movement. You know, they didn't go far enough, but they came to Jesus and that's the most that's the most important part is, is seeing Jesus or is, is coming and giving the heart to Jesus praise the Lord so I'm excited if they do this they annex that that's more land that it does come under the, the jurisdiction of Israel sovereignty of Israel so I don't know how much land it is or whatever but uh they're still on line to, to wanting to do it until July 1, and God can turn the heart of one or the other and say yes, and then they, because if one of them says yes, the other one will say yes. So it's like they're kind of playing off on each other here. And uh, so remember, Second Chronicles 16, 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. I remember when I bought this property next door, we would put a house trailer back over here, moved it in there, and then I built a house all around it, tore the house trailer out, so there's like a 20-foot pipe laying underneath that house is all that's left of the house trailer. So... So anyway, when we cut the beams out, we took it room by room when I didn't owe any money when I was done. So anyway, uh, the land in front of it belonged to my brother-in-law, Edwin. And I went over and asked him if I could buy the land in front because I bought this property from Dad with Ruth's dad's money. And uh, then I wanted to buy the front and he said no. And I said, you know, I mean, it's our... Our house is sitting there. The yard is in front of it. They had a, like a garden, but they, I don't think they were using it as a garden anymore. It was in grass. And I asked them different times, and said, no, I'm not selling land. I said, okay. So what did I do? I started praying for him. Just bless him. Every time I'd see him, I'd pray for him and bless him to just bless Edmund. Edmund just bless him, bless him, bless him. And every night in my prayer time, I would, I would just pray blessings upon him. Later, he found a doubt about it, and he said he shouldn't have sold it to me, so I'd keep praying for him. But, <laughs> but, but he came over to the house one night, and he said, you know, I'll go ahead and I'll sell it to you, you know, without, without such and such a price. And he said, I just wanted to see if, if they would actually let you had this little sliver coming in and, and the house, because I had to have that roof on it in order to buy the other one. And uh, he said, I just wanted to see if he could do it without that. But it's like, that worked. I prayed, just blessed him, instead of getting mad at him and curse at him, you know, I thought, oh, there's a jerk that doesn't sell me the land. No, I didn't do that. But it's, but it's like, why don't we learn that? You know, now I've tried to do other things, and it's like I try to force things to happen. Why can't I take that as a lesson? But it seems like we don't want to learn from lessons, do we? It's like we got to go through it again and again. I remember when the Rev was here years ago, 
he said there was something that he was dealing with for a long time and he couldn't make it happen. I mean, he just, he worked and worked at it. Finally, he just said, okay, God, I'm going on vacation. He said, I'm going on a two-week vacation and I'm done with it. It's yours, uh, but I don't care. He said when he got back two weeks later, everything was taken care of. Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I mean, you know how big a mustard seed is. They say it's the tiniest seed, so it means you can probably barely see it when you got one in your hand. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall be removed, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. What part of impossible don't we understand? Nothing shall be impossible. Now, for me, somebody that can do a whole lot of different things, I'm always looking for a backhoe. Somebody with a backhoe to come and move my mountain or my hill instead of going to God. Wayne. Yeah. Wayne. Yeah. But how often is it that we, instead of just saying, God, you can handle this, Instead, we try to do it. Amen. What is, think of something today that something you've been working on and it's just not happening. Whether it's out there in Zoom land or here, that there's things in your life that you have tried and worked with and tried to make things happen, but you couldn't, it didn't happen. I would like for you to come up and stand up front here and just give it to God. Just say, okay, I have worked on this and I have worked on this. And it just seems like I just can't get anywhere. If you've got something, don't you don't need to make anything up. You don't have to come up just for anyhow or for the coming up. But if there's things that you have thought that you haven't been able to do, and it's something that you felt that's supposed to happen maybe, or you don't, or whether it's family, whether it's whatever it is, and you have worked real hard to try to make things happen. I would like for you to come up and, oh, we've got a whole bunch of Bibles over here. Can you get some of those and put them out here and put them on the chairs back here? And I would like to use that as a symbol I don't know how many we need, I don't know how many people, everybody out here might have everything in control and don't have any problems with anything. Just put them back here. And what I'd like for you to do is, is just pretend like this Bible, just put a stack there, it's fine. Just, just pretend like this, this is the, this is my problem, and no, it's not the Bible, it's not your problem, the Bible is your answer. But just take this as if, you know, I've been praying for my family member for 20 years, pleading, just de almost demanding or, or whatever. And it's like, I've gone as far as I can. I just want to give it to you. Use this as a prop, kind of, to just give it to God and allow God to step in and show up for you. And just allow you, allow him to show himself strong. And then don't forget to give him the glory. Amen. Amen. See, when everything was going good with Asa, again, he turned around and tried to do it himself because we're so programmed that in today's world that we can do things ourselves. But we have an awesome God. We have an awesome God. And I'll just, I just agree with you in whatever it is that whatever you're praying for, and just just believe this is this is this scripture is still alive and well today. Amen. The Lord runs to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong. He wants to show your, Himself strong through each one of these that you have, this this 
problem that you have that's, that is what you're holding in your hand that you're going to give to him? That he wants to show himself strong in that way. So, Father, you see all the people that are here. You see the things that they have. You know each one. You know what each one is thinking about. And, and we see in your word that you're looking for someone with a pure heart, which the Bible actually says perfect heart, but it means a mature heart towards you. None of us are perfect, but that we have a heart towards you. So as they come, we're inviting you, Father, to come and show yourself strong in each one of these things that we're bringing to you today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. So, Scott, you want to start this one? Both of you can come up. Yes, you are no longer responsible for this. God, God will show himself strong. Amen. Thank you. I agree with them. I agree with them for the situation that they're coming about. But it's so bad. Show yourself strong, Father. Thank you, 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 Father. Bless Ruth, Father. Thank you that she's giving this away. It's no longer her problem. It's that she's not giving it into your hands. Thank you, Father. Bless you. Says my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Yes. Give it away. Yes. Thank you, sure. Thank you. Thank you, bless Lena. Thank you that she will no longer worry about this, that it is in your hands, that you will show yourself strong, that you will show up. Thank you, Lord. Bless her, Father. Bless her, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, folks, good to have you here today. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for taking these burdens, these things that they've been praying about, and they've been wanting to see something happen with it, and now uh, they're giving it to you. They're saying, we're tired of struggling with it. It's now in your hands. That we know that it's in good hands, and they are released from this. Thank you, Father. We thank you that we shall see you move on their behalf. Anyone that's out there in Zoom land, if you want to grab something and just lay it down, so just say, okay, this is the problem that I've been praying about. This is what I've been working with. And uh, so we will just take that and put it into a different place. And it will be. We have one more that's going to be laid down. And she will no longer struggle with this. She's now should giving I, it over to Should Zoom. I tell you what it is? You don't need to. I'm going to. Okay. 
floor. I want to be released of not being able to completely point when I go to the bathroom. I didn't know it until I was in the hospital. But I don't want to do anything stupid or medical, and I don't want to not take action. But Father, I need to be released from this situation. Amen. It's just Amen. stupid. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for your healing touch. We thank you that that is one of your gifts of spirit. You said for healing, for flow through her right now. And we share how much you have. We pray blessing over her. We pray healing over her right now. We pray for miracles over her, Father God. We thank you that she's released us into your hands, and there's nothing too large or too small that you cannot take, that you cannot do. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Thank you for healing. Amen. Take this situation, this problem over. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! You know, there is no other God that's out there looking to show himself strong to his people. The love is awesome. He's doing it because of his love. Amen. He doesn't want us to carry a burden. He said, or, he said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Amen. So don't carry that thing around and get rid of it. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, just thank you for all the people here at Carmel, the people out in Zoom land. Father, we just pray blessing upon them. Thank you that you want to prosper them, that you want to walk and take care of all their needs, Lord God, as they walk before you in, in your word, following your word, following after your commandments. And we give you praise. And we pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Wow. Make it. I was late because I worked the food pantry this morning. And because of the rain or because of COVID, we're not quite sure why, we were overloaded with food. So my van is full on, I have the boys to bring them in and put it on the table. Most of all, we have grapes that will go bad, but there's potatoes and watermelon and all kinds of, but it's a parish floor. Get them out of my house, they won't go bad. <laughs> I miss quite a few of them. So yeah. everybody's welcome to take whatever, because we, it will go bad at our house. See how God's already prospering you? Yeah. Thank you Jesus. How many people's problem was not enough grapes in the house? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Blessings.